So we want to say hello and welcome to this program of the University of Arkansas Small Business Technology and Development Center. We're very pleased to be able to bring you these educational programs to help support small businesses like yours. Please be advised that we will be recording the webinar for ASB TDC education purposes. As a registrant and attendee of the webinar, you will be emailed a copy of this presentation. If you cannot see your full, and today if we cannot see your full name and the participants, please send a message to us, all panelists, with your full name. I will introduce Natasha momentarily, but first I'd like to introduce us and tell you a little bit about ASB TDC. I'm Amy Robinson. I'm a specialty consultant, and I'm here with my colleague and co-host, Chris Case. Hello, Chris. And if you don't know about the Small Business Development Center, it is a one-stop shop for startups and existing small businesses. We are associated with the University of Arkansas and affiliated with the SBA and statewide ASB TDC, as well as a national network of more than a thousand small business centers. And locally, we offer complimentary one-on-one -on -one consulting that includes business planning, market analysis and strategy, financial modeling, and more. So we offer programs like this that cover relevant topics. And if you're not already a client, we encourage you to visit us at sbtdc.uark.edu. We will be posting all kinds of links for you to be able to find us, become a client, um, see the recording, all of the things that you get to do with us. So it's wonderful to have you here. Chris, tell us a little bit about how we're going to be working things today. Okay, great. Thanks, Amy. So hi, everybody. I'm Chris Case, and today we're bringing you why you need an email marketing strategy and how to build one. So this is a webinar format, and we love these because you can participate either the Q&A or the chat. Now, if someone asks a question in the Q&A that you have as well, please feel free to upvote that so that will take priority when we're answering questions and make sure that we get those taken care of. Um, please note that you have the ability to be anonymous in the Q&A, but not in the chat. We will be monitoring questions and having them um, asked where appropriate as we go along. And then we'll leave a little bit of time at the end to make sure to add, answer any questions that we have not answered. Um, you're also welcome to raise the hand using the participants window during the Q&A session at the end. And we will unmute you and um, ask, have you ask those personally. Again, we will be monitoring the chat and the Q&A very closely, so feel free to ask any questions that you have, and we will get to you just as soon as we can. Amy, you want to finish us off and get us started? Yes. Well, while we get to know Natasha, we'd love to get to know all of you. So please post in the chat about what industry you're in, maybe um, what stage you are in your email marketing journey. Um, maybe you haven't started yet. Maybe you've started, but you're not sure what you're doing. Um, and uh, so give us a little tip on what it is that you have um, questions about today. And then that will help Natasha speak to you and your business a little bit more easily. So the moment that we've all been waiting for, we're happy to introduce our presenter, Natasha Murphy, coming to us from an actual office, not at from home. <laughs> she is. And our office is in Atlanta, nicely built, provides digital marketing services, including brand design and websites um, built to engage and convert users. Natasha is passionate about not only her clients, but helping small businesses and, and large navigate the confusing and ever-changing world of e-commerce, which is exactly why you're here today. She calls on her personal experience as an employee in the coding world and now as an entrepreneur, helping other entrepreneurs. Natasha, we're so excited to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Um, it's such a, it's a pleasure to be here and talk about one of my favorite things, email marketing. So I hope that regardless of where you're at in setting up your email marketing strategy, you learn things today. Without further ado, we can go ahead and get started. So today we're going to talk about email marketing from a very practical standpoint. We're going to First, define it, and then we're going to talk about how to actually set it up, and then we are going to talk about some more kind of specific advanced topics. So what is email marketing? Uh, this gets kind of thrown around a lot. Like you always hear people telling you, oh, you need to email. But what does that mean? Does it mean that you send out a weekly newsletter? You know, um, like what is, is that all there is to it? So email marketing refers to any promotion of your business through email. And um, it's different from other types of marketing 
and that it gives you direct access to your customer base. So unlike Facebook ads, for example, or Instagram, um, if you send an email to someone, they are very, 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 very likely to receive it. Whereas on Facebook, Instagram, and other advertising platforms, um, just because you run an ad doesn't mean that all of your followers are gonna see it. In fact, um, a very small amount of your followers will likely see that ad. So it's a great way for um, really connecting and speaking directly to your customer base. Um, another thing, great thing about email marketing is that um, you can use it to create long-standing relationship with your customers and really kind of um, start off day one, welcoming them, and then maybe four years down the line, you're sending them a thank you email for being such a great customer and spending over a thousand dollars with your company. So um, there's a lot of uh, room for growth in that relationship when you use um, email marketing. So some of the benefits of email marketing, it converts a lot better than search engine optimization, display ads, social media, lead channels, again, um, when you run an ad or um, engage in other types of paid advertising, not all of your followers are necessarily going to see that ad. Um, very small percentage will see it. 94% of internet users use email. So if they are online, if they're a customer of yours, it's likely they're choosing email. I don't know anyone who doesn't use email. Um, and 75% of Adult email users actually state a preference for receiving marketing information in their inboxes. Um, so this is really how people prefer to receive promotions and information that they've signed up for is actually in their email box. Um, so there's a couple of programs, a couple of solutions on the market you could use to send out emails to your customers. Um, and not just send out those emails, but also keep all of the email information in one place, so emails and names, um, and just kind of run that entire uh, email marketing, um, and just run it all from one place. So these are just a few. MailChimp, which is Atlanta-based. Klaviyo, which is actually Boston-based. Um, and I don't know the other basis for these other four. Constant contact, Emma, Drip, and ConvertKit. So those are a couple of options. Um, MailChimp and Clavio are by far the industry leaders. Uh, I typically see people who are not selling online. So if you're a real estate agent or um, maybe you have a hair salon, I see uh, those types of businesses use MailChimp with great frequency and then um, I see businesses use and get a lot of benefit, um, businesses that sell things. So if you're selling online, I see those types of businesses using Playpio. So Natasha, you know that this is always going to be a hot question, which is about um, the cost of things. Yeah. Um, and uh, so you may cover that a little bit later, but mm -hmm. um, that was a, an initial question. Yeah, yeah. So all of these platforms, um, I know MailChimp and Clavio start out with it's a it's priced based upon how many emails you have. Clavio is free for up into 500 emails. Um, MailChimp also is free up until a certain point. Um, but after that point, you start paying based upon how many emails you have. So um, both of these services, they have a calculator. So if you like Google, um, MailChimp pricing or Clavio pricing, you can enter in the number of email contacts you have and it will give you a monthly cost. Um, and so you kind of, you pay more as you grow. Uh, so the more email addresses that you have, um, the more you're gonna pay each month. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, great. All right, so, um, you know, one of your, if you're brand new to the game, uh, your first step is really going to be selecting a platform, either from the list we just reviewed or if you know of another um, platform, just kind of deciding where you want to start. 
So when you're selecting that platform, um, you can ask yourself a few questions, you know, understand your business needs. This is the most important. Um, so, you know, for example, if your primary business need is to sell more things, then you're, you're going to want to sign up for a platform um, that has a really robust feature set that's designed specifically for online selling, such as Clavio. Um, if you're a smaller business and perhaps you, you, um, you're also looking for, um, you don't have a website yet. And so you're looking for kind of a, an all-in-one solution that's going to let you not only do your email marketing, but also, um, you know, put a landing page in place so people can find information about your business on the internet. Um, you're, you're going to want to maybe use something like MailChimp. So really kind of um, taking the time to list out what it is that your business needs. So uh, Natasha, we have a few businesses here. They're yeah. sharing um, who we have. And um, we have everything from a restaurant to someone in the travel industry. We also have uh, someone uh, that is selling keepsake journals and books, okay. um, as well as uh, someone in the business or sales coach industry. So, um, and they specifically have used Flowdesk and have just switched yeah. to Kajabi. They just switched to Kajabi to house website opt-ins mm -hmm. and things like that. So, and um, somebody else uses the Klaviyo as well. Yeah. Kajabi is pretty specific to an online course um, offering. So you would use that like if you are, you know, working as a consultant and you have a class that's open to 20 people, um, you know, Kajabi would probably, that would be a good um, option. There's, there's a couple others out there as well. Um, but that Kajabi is pretty specific to like selling online courses. I also have a, yeah, we've got a couple of people coming in um, just because I know you're going to keep remember this and keep everybody in mind, a yeah. child care business and oh, um, a storytelling company. So kind of a marketing, kind of a marketing firm angle. So you've got a huge variety of, uh, of people that you're talking to today. Yeah. Yeah. And to kind of like harken back, I think um, these days, the way that marketing technology is kind of like advancing um, it really kind of, for me, I always started the question of like, are you selling online or not? Because if you are, everything um, that you do is going to center around making sales, getting a higher conversion rate, creating return customers. Um, if you don't sell online, you're, it becomes different because at that point you're looking for exposure. You're still looking to get leads coming in the door, um, but it's not going to be as like transactional as if you were selling. So I think kind of starting there and just deciding, um, you know, that maybe like, for me, that's a really good differenti differentiator is whether or not someone is selling online. Another important thing to think about is your budget. Uh, I don't think most of the options that I'm aware of, like they do cost money. And um, like any software, you, you definitely get what you pay for. So um, I think starting out, you can probably plan on spending around $30 a month and get some really solid MarTech um, for that, that budget. And it would likely increase over time, um, but it wouldn't be like a, huge increase like all at once. You also want to try to think about what you're trying to accomplish with email marketing. Are you looking to tell people about your services? Um, are you going to launch a new user generated content campaign and you want to tell people to like include a hashtag when they post on Instagram of themselves in the t-shirt you made? Um, do you want to send out emails to let people know that you've planned some great events for the spring? Um, so really kind of thinking about uh, what it is that you're really trying to accomplish like with email marketing is also helpful to consider when you're selecting a platform. 
So once you've selected a platform, you can sign up, uh, go ahead and create your account. And once you do, you'll be able to start collecting emails, which is really when your email marketing plan takes off. It's like when you're actually getting those emails into place. So there are a couple things to keep in mind when you are collecting emails. Um, you know, really kind of think about who your target audience is. It's going to help you convince people to hand over their email address because uh, I'm sure you're all aware that we're constantly being asked for our email these days. So, you know, before we hand it over, there, there, there should be either like some sort of like instantaneous 15% discount or, um, you know, you, you need to think that you're going to receive relevant content in exchange for sharing. So think about like who your target audience is, um, what problems they are experiencing, and why they show interest in your product or service in the first place. So um, you know one example could be the um, let's see, let me pick a let me pick one. So let's use the childcare business as an example. Um, you know an experience they or a problem they might be experienced uh, is, you know, um, crazy full uh, wait list. So you could advertise on your website or wherever, um, uh, you know, immediate openings or openings as of this date and kind of get right in front of, right in front of those parents that are looking for um, a daycare or childcare center. Um, you know, you can also think about why they show interest in or purchase your product or service in the first place. Um, so, you know, let's say let get another one. So about the, the keepsake journals, um, you know, maybe they they showed interest initially because they they um, wanted a really special gift to give someone. Um, so, you know, you could, you could really kind of capitalize on that by saying, um, you know, a, a unique gift or, you know, um, time treasured honor of journaling. It just, I'm not a writer, so you guys please don't judge me. But you could really kind of emphasize the fact that you carry a product that's super special and that, you know, people people will respond to that if that's kind of what they're looking for in the first place. Probably something similar in the coaching or um, industry mm -hmm. or or classes or anything like that. Just anything that's timely is really what it sounds like you're yeah. you're pushing. That's yeah. awesome. Um, it's yeah, it's it's. I feel like it's easier to kind of come up with that when you reverse engineer it and put your shoe, put yourself in the shoes of your customer. So you also want to think about who your best customers are and what characteristics they have in common. So um, if you notice that it's, it's mostly like children, adult children buying gifts for their parents, like that's something to keep in mind. Um, you can start incorporating uh, like the words mom or dad into your, your, your messaging to really capitalize on that fact. Um, or you know, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe your, your customers, like for in the daycare, you hear more and more that they're choosing to, to go with your business because um, you have like a really special kind of menu that you feed the children. So, um, you know, you could also highlight, or, you know, like the current, the, the, your best customers, they hear that and they're like, sign me up. Like that's kind of the deal breaker. So you want to think about that. Like think about some of the, um, the, the reasons that they ultimately decide to go with you. And then what did I provide for my customers that my competition didn't? Um, so it could be, it could be something as simple as gift wrapping. Like you provide gift wrapping, but your competition doesn't. Um, you know, it's really going to be kind of the value proposition that sets you apart from your competitors. 
kind of keep all that in mind. Um, here's a little exercise to help you think about positioning yourself as you kind of get ready to start asking people to give you their email. So um, I'm just going to do this for Nicely Bill. Nicely Bill creates content to attract online retailers so they can sell online better. So now that you've given a little bit of thought to the type of messaging that you're going to use and given some thought to just kind of who you are as a business, what it is that you're marketing, you can go ahead and start collecting these emails. So this ex example on the screen right now is a pop-up. This is actually a MailChimp pop-up. So this is something that we built using MailChimp. Um, the sign-up box on your website should go in the footer. That's where we usually put it. You can also enable a pop-up, which is what you see on the site. Those are very standard these days. Um, you definitely don't want to just say sign up for our newsletter because no, the chances of someone signing up is pretty low. So you want to make it fun. You want to make it, you know, kind of really evocative of your brand. So kind of play play around with the language um, and think about, you know, what what we kind of entice your customers to sign up. For this example, Party Wagon, this is a blogger who entertains a lot. And so she's constantly kind of posting these really cool parties. And so we decided for her, uh, her call to action that we would say, it wouldn't be a party without you, sign up for our email newsletter. And then you can also incentivize your email signups by offering a carrot. So we call it a carrot when you're giving something to this, the person in return for sharing their email. It could be a code for 15% off their first purchase. Could be, um, one thing I see a lot is people will have like a, an article or like a really helpful resource guide. And they will say, if you sign up, we'll send you the, we'll send you this. So that, that might be something helpful. Um, to kind of like uh, create that lead magnet. So, you know, just kind of the, the concept being that you, you really kind of want to like give the people a reason to sign up. So once you start um, having people sign up, you're going to have emails in your account, which is awesome because then it's time to start emailing those people. So before you, you jump in, you, you want to spend a little bit of time thinking about the types of emails you're going to send, like how often you're going to send them, and, and really kind of give it some thought up front so that you don't send an um, email out that says, welcome to our first monthly newsletter, but then you like never send it out again. So you want to be thoughtful, intentional about the types of messaging that you're sending out. So think about how often you want to send your regularly scheduled emails, whether it's weekly, monthly, quarterly. If you're, if you're brand new to email marketing, I would definitely suggest monthly or quarterly. Um, you would be surprised at how much of your time uh, that you will potentially spend on putting these emails together. So the the lower the bar you can give yourself, um, just starting out, the better. Like your chances of aren't succeeding. You really want to like pace that send frequency based upon how much information you have to share. So if you um, don't have a lot of information to share very often, then you may want to consider like doing those quarterly updates. Um, you definitely don't want to just send an email. For the sake of sending an email because your engagement metrics will drop people won't um, open them as often they won't click on them so you know really kind of keep that in mind when you're figuring out how many you want to or what frequency you want to send it, it really depends on how much information you have to share 
I really love that. And um, as a person who's trying to get her newsletter out today, I feel that um, <laughs> feel that uh, load that goes into that. Um, so we've got a couple questions about frequency. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you've said weekly, monthly, quarterly, um, you know, just kind of what I hear you saying is if you've got a ton of information then maybe send it more frequently because not everybody's going to get through all of that. Um, if you're sending it, um, but is there a too much, is there, how, is there too little, um, do you recommend um, things like, Hey, we have a special, like do a regular monthly letter and then a yeah. pop up kind of thing. Yeah, so we'll we'll talk about this a little bit later in the presentation, but I'm actually not a big fan of campaigns. Um, I prefer automations. And so automations are different from campaigns in that they they sit and they run around the clock. Um, and they trigger based upon actions that your user takes. So for example, when someone first signs up for your email list, they receive a welcome email that kind of gives them the 411, tells them what you're about. Um, when someone uh, is on your site and it's, if, assuming it's a shopping site, they leave something in their cart, they don't check out, um, an automated email goes out reminding them they left something in their cart. So, and those are just kind of two examples. There are a lot of different automations that you can put in place. I prefer automations to the one size fits all campaigns because they're timely and they're personalized to what your action your user has just taken. So um, that that's what I prefer with the campaigns. I, I think it can be I think it can be a little tricky to get it right. Um, daily too often. Weekly, probably too often. Um, I, I would lean towards monthly or quarterly, and you do definitely want to like keep the campaigns um, fun and relevant uh, so that your your users want to read them. But if you're just kind of like sending out, this is new, you know, like they're not going to be that interested. Um, another, I don't want to call it a mistake, but another thing I see people do is they send out um, they'll only send out sale emails. So they'll, they'll send out these emails and they're like, 20% off everything in the store. And they get, they make sales because like they have this like incredible discount. Um, and then, you know, they do it again like a month later. But what happens in those scenarios is that their customers actually get trained to only shop the site when everything's on sale. So be careful about that. Like if you're going to do like a sale or Include like a special code. Um, I would do it maybe like once or twice a year, like you, because you don't want your customers to only shop your store when you have um, a sale going. Hey, Natasha, just one more quick question. And I think you might be getting to this one too in just a little bit, but um, I am horrible at design. I, I, I don't even know where to start. And it that sounds like Kathleen might need some help also. So is there a virtual assistant or an other resource that, um, she can use to identify someone that can help her design newsletters? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I the the big marketplaces are the ones that I know of. So I, I'd recommend maybe trying out Upwork or Fiverr um, and you can search for email marketing and you know find someone who's gonna be a good fit for what you're looking for. So I would, I would recommend just starting there. Um, last thing you want to think about is the time of day that's going to net the most engagement from your audience. So you could try out different times of the day and see what performs the best. A lot of uh, the emails services actually will pick a time for you. So they'll run an AD test and then use that to kind of determine the send, the send time. So there's, there's a lot of resources online for just figuring out when to, um, what time of day to send out your email. A couple options, um, morning, 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. tend to perform really well. 2 p.m. after people are getting settled in, after lunch, um, evening, 8 p.m. after kids are down, dishes are done. And days of the week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Wednesday, uh, these all tend to perform really well. So 
So um, next we're gonna talk about content. Again, you really wanna think about the type of content you're including when you write a campaign. So you can maybe give subscribers an overview of your company news, but again, keep it fun, keep it engaging. Um, and generally you wanna keep it 90% like educational, 10% promotional. So um, rather than send out an email that says, everything uh, in the store is on sale, like maybe instead you leave with, you know, um, a customer testimonial about how they were just overjoyed by the fact they could come to your store and get all of their gift shopping done in one go. And then at the bottom of the email, you could say, you know, enjoy 10% off today only. So there's, you can, you can pair that educational content with the promotional. So it, you don't come off as like an obnoxious salesperson. Um, and you want to make sure that if you, you do decide to send out campaigns that they are sent at like in recurring intervals of time. So monthly, like if you do it, maybe the fourth or third Monday of every month, just kind of like making sure you stick to that schedule. Um, so as we kind of touched upon earlier, the, the, the campaigns, kind of those emails that you send out yourself is that's the first type of email. The second type is automated emails. And these are sent automatically in um, response to a subscriber specific action. So some common automated emails are actually the two that I named, um, the welcome email and the abandoned cart. Uh, some other emails are back in stock, um, win back campaign, um, VIP flow. So there's, there's a lot of different options out there. These dedicated emails, timed emails promoting a specific uh, offering. And this would really kind of be a uh, example of a campaign because you would, you would set it up and then you would send it to uh, potentially everybody on your list or to a small segment of people on your list. So, um, these are just some ideas for the type of content that you can include in your email based upon what we've seen just completing this type of work for our clients. Because you definitely want to keep them engaged and interesting so that you can keep unsubscribes and low open rates to a minimum. Product announcements, if you roll out a new product, then people, they want to hear about it. Um, that could go for services as well. If you start offering a new service, your email list is a great place to kind of tell people about that. Behind the scenes, people really like um, just kind of like peeking behind the curtain and seeing, you know, what it's like in a day of. So that might, that would be a great idea. Event invitations. So now that the um, world is starting to open back up a little, um, you know, event invitations, people love to receive those. Customer client success stories um, are great. That's social proof um, and how to. These are, these are great, especially if you have, um, if you have a product or you sell a product to kind of demonstrate how to use it or how to wear it. Um, so that's, that's a, a great way of just kind of promoting the things that you offer. And in terms of actually putting together the email, you want to remember to do a mixture of images and text. So you don't want just a wall of text, but you don't really want just an image either. You want to strike a balance, use some images, text, images, and switch back um, before uh, between the two. Um, so you want to break up the sections with line dividers or images to kind of just like visually separate out the content so people can 
you know, understand like, oh, here's a section, here's a section. You want to use bold section titles to help organize the content, use an intriguing subject line, include a call to action. So shop now or learn more. Embrace brevity. So again, like not sending a wall of text to your um, your subscriber. And um, always remember to spell check because there's nothing worse than looking really hard on an email campaign and then having four people uh, write you back to tell you that you misspelled a word. <laughs> um, so once you kind of have your your account set up and you're collecting emails and you're sending some um, and you feel like you have that under control, you can really start to ramp up. And usually the next step that people take is um, just implementing more and more automations. Um, so again, like an email automation is any message that is automatically sent um, based it, like as a direct response to a user specific action. So some examples include um, a welcome to the party automation that gives new subscribers options to learn more about your brand, how we started, upcoming events, et cetera. Did you forget something? Automation triggered by an abandoned cart um, or a follow-up email triggered by subscribers' previous email interactions. Second thing you're gonna wanna um, do when you're like revving up is implement list segmentation. So um, just like, you know, kind of identifying your target market helps you hone in on your, your marketing communication strategies. Segmenting, kind of grouping your customers together by shared um, characteristics is really beneficial when it comes to email marketing because you can tailor make your, you can really kind of make your messaging super specific to those customer sets. Some of the benefits of segmentation, um, you can better match your messaging to specific customer segments. You can upsell customers by targeting offers. So for example, if you sell a product and there's maybe a companion product, one of the automations you could put in place is um, an email suggesting that anyone who purchased this first product consider that um, second product. And you can increase engagement and click-through rates with more personalized communication. So if someone receives an email that says like, thanks for your purchase of this item, or what did you think of this item, or they receive hey, that item you were interested in is back in stock. They're a lot more likely to click and interact with that email than they are your company newsletter, just because it's targeted specifically to them. So that, that uh, was an example of using segmentation and automation. Um, you know, you can segment based upon purchase of a specific product and then have an automation flow specific to that segmentation. Um, your your three-part abandoned cart email series is a great, um, if you wanted to segment, and I see a lot of people segment their abandoned cart these days so that if the abandoned cart um, total amount is above $100, they include a discount um, in the abandoned cart series, but they don't do that if it's the, um, the cart total is less than 100. So that would be an example of using both segmentation and automation simultaneously. Um, purchase history, email follow-up. Again, if you wanted to target um, purchasers of a specific product or a specific collection of products and send them um, a very targeted email follow-up after they purchase that product. That's an example of combining the two. Um, and if you wanted to segment out former customers and clients that you haven't heard from in a while, you could segment out um, those folks and then you could use an automation in an attempt to re-engage them. 
So a couple of or several examples for how you could potentially segment your email list, um, purchase history, age and gender, geographic location, um, events or interactions, either in person or on the web, hobbies and interests, art contents. You can even get specific about the visitor's device, whether it's a, a laptop or an iPhone, Android, et cetera. Um, and things that they do with the emails you send. So newly subscribed, um, if they clicked a certain link or opened a certain email. Um, so the next section we're going to talk about is reporting. But I, does anybody have any questions about what we just talked about before I move on? Let's see. We have a little bit about, um, and it probably incorporates into that segmentation, um, but about your target audience and kind of, you know, how to identify that. You did have a slide earlier with the little, um, you know, with the kind of the, the worksheet um, mm -hmm. and kind of giving your audience a persona. Um, yeah. But in addition to, in addition to that, and then segmenting and just kind of how, how, how you're finding your email marketing list like how are how are they even finding you in the context of knowing that they need to sign up yeah um that's a really good question so there's um i kind of feel like that kind of brings back to just kind of basic marketing so you know when you have when you start your business these days like you want to make sure you have a facebook page that you have like at least like a web page or a small website that talks about your your hours, your contact information, services, et cetera. Um, and then kind of the third part of that would be the, the email marketing or account. So, um, you know, you, you would use that Facebook account and, and use that website and, you know, potentially an Instagram account to really kind of like post things and, you know, just start marketing. Um, and so the, the email marketing would really kind of work in tandem with those efforts. So that people would be able to sign up for your newsletter list on your Facebook page or um, on your website, there would be an option to sign up. Or on Instagram, you're doing like the link in profile and one of them is email sign up. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And then I think that um, just expanding a little bit on target audience and kind of what that, what maybe what an exercise in addition to the one that you gave us might look like. I don't know if you have any you know, favorite, um, favorite anybody to kind of help identify target audience, but yeah. some expanded ways to do that. Yeah. So we, um, you know, we, we typically do, so there's target audience actually was just doing that earlier today. Um, so when you're thinking about your, your target audience, it's like who is most likely to buy your product. Um, so you might want to think about, okay, for childcare example, um, is it the mom or the dad? It's, it's usually the mom. I don't want to say it's always the mom. It's, you know, it's a mom. Um, she's not a stay-at-home mom, so she's working to some outside the home to some extent, hence the need for childcare. Um, she needs to be able to afford it, so she would be, you know, a, a combined household income of at least 80000 mm -hmm. um, You know, she's within 20 minutes of the daycare center. So really kind of like thinking about the type of person that would um, sign up and actually like pay for your service. A little bit of a walk a mile in somebody's yeah. shoes, like yeah. coming through your door and, yeah. and also even bumping it up, um, wouldn't you say to kind of like your ideal so that, mm -hmm. so yeah. it's not like just all the moms within 20, working moms within 20 minutes, but yeah. you know, also just kind of narrowing and narrowing and narrowing until you have kind of that ideal. Yeah. Person. And, mm -hmm. and that's like, you know, where you can, depending on like your specific uh, business, that's when, you know, like, let's say that you offer music classes and that's like something that sets you apart, then um, your target customer would likely, you know, really see the value in extracurricular activities or they would want some sort of musical training for their children. Um, so, you know, that just kind of understanding who it is that you're selling to or that you want to sell to just kind of makes the rest of the process a lot easier. Love it. So the, the next section we're gonna talk about is reporting. Um, and 
the reporting is incredibly important because it's how you understand uh, whether or not you're getting better, whether or not there's a return on investment. Um, you know, really just kind of like understanding um, just kind of how you're doing. So uh, you want to like, there are, when you're just proving to yourself that this is something you should be investing your time in, there are a few, um, few metrics you can look at, few basic metrics. So email opens, that's how many times, how many emails were open versus the numbers of emails that were sent. So if half the people that receive your email open it, then your open rate uh, is 50%. Email deliveries, how many emails from your send list were delivered? This is usually pretty high, like it's you know 95 to 99%. Um, there's usually going to be bounce back to some degree, um, et cetera, et cetera. Unsubscribes, this is a really important one because it lets you know that you'll have a lot of unsubscribes when you're sending out irrelevant information or if you're um, emailing people too often. So the unsubscribes is, is really important to keep a, a good, um, just keep an eye on. Is there a good yes. rule of thumb, Natasha, for a good open rate and or conversion rate? Do you have yeah. some kind of um, standard? So there's, yeah, so there's open rate, click rate, and um, I, I don't, so conversion rate could mean a lot of different things depending on, you know, the scenario, but open rate, you want to keep it above 20, 25%. Um, if it dips below 20%, like you have a problem. Um, and then for click rate, I mean, anything between five and 10% is pretty good. So you also wanna look at, um, so in addition to kind of like, just, you know, knowing what these metrics are and understanding them, you can also look at um, A-B test results. So if you A-B test the send from name, you know, maybe it's nicely built versus Natasha at nicely built. Um, I could A-B test that and see if there's like a difference in open rate, if there probably would be. And if Natasha at Nicely Built would probably be the better performer because people um, are more likely to open something that they think a person has sent them rather than a company. Return on investment, how much revenue has your email generated to compare to how much you spend. So um, let's say you're on that $30 a month of plan and your emails generate $90 worth of sales, then you have um, a 200% ROI. So you, you can kind of do those calculations um, as a way of also calculate, you know, just understanding whether or not things are working. Time spent with the email open, how long did a subscriber spend looking at your email? It's an interesting one. Um, and finally, email bounces. So how many emails reached an inbox but were bounced back and open? All good information, also kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so best practices just to kind of help you guys, um, you know, be the best that you can be. Be authentic, not salesy. So like really try to like be yourself. Um, that people really respond well to that. And optimize your emails for mobile viewing. Most people are checking email on their phone these days, so it's important to remember to keep the email under 600 pixels wide, to use a, a large font size. People can't read any mini text on their phone. Um, use short subject lines. So again, be really concise, um, say it in less words. And, um, when you're putting your images in place, make sure that you use alt text. So in case the image doesn't load, there's some descriptive text that tells the reader you know, what it's an image of. So these are um, some common trigger words. If you include any of these words or characters in your subject line, um, there's a likelihood that your email will be blocked by um, incoming mail servers. Because oh, these days, pretty much like every, you know, um, email client has like anti-spam measures in place to cut down on the amount of spam that their users receive. 
So don't use these words and characters if you can help it. And on that note, that is the end of my presentation and I will happily answer questions if anybody has them. Absolutely. Um, we, yeah. we have about 10 minutes, so we've got a lot of time to answer questions if anybody has them. Yeah, we've everybody's been asking questions along the way. Um, I definitely would love to hear from uh, some of our, our service companies. I know sometimes that's a little harder to sell than a product. Um, so if you have some questions about um, how to sell services, I think that that would be, um, that would be fantastic and um, love to hear some of the things that you all are are really um, thinking about. Um, so we have uh, someone asking about any good ideas on how to build an email list via the social channels, Instagram or Facebook. You talked, you touched on this just a little bit a moment ago about yeah. standard marketing um, and kind of getting it out there and getting those opportunities to sign up for um, uh, the, the newsletter. But if you have any more specific tips on social media channel usage. Yeah, yeah. if you're if you're in that um, brand awareness stage of your business and you're, you're trying to find those eyeballs, um, one option that I've seen kind of work well is contest giveaways in which, you know, people, um, they sign up for your email list or they, um, they like your Instagram page or maybe they do like a few different things in order to enter. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you can give away a nice prize. You can maybe even give away one of your services. Mm -hmm. um, if you do AirPods, they're, I mean, it's, they're expensive, but you're probably going to have more people to sign up. Um, so, but that, that would be like one recommendation I have for um, just finding people to, to sign up for your list. Yes, absolutely. Um, tagging people is another popular one. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, giving things away, there's a prize. So if you are a service industry, definitely your time. Um, and being, you know, in a reasonable way, like if you, you know, want to give away hours and hours or an entire like strategic plan or something crazy like that, but um, a little bit of your time um, or tools, that's fantastic. Um, and one a question, and this is another good one, which is, can you acquire an email list? Can you buy an email list? No, I, no, uh -uh, <laughs> no, it is, um, I'll just go and say it is straight up illegal to email someone who doesn't give you explicit permission. So if you, if you buy an email list and you email everybody on it, you are breaking the law. Um, so you, you definitely don't want to do that. That's unethical uh, as well as illegal. Slow process. So yeah. the process of getting yourself out there, social media is one really good, mm -hmm. um, easy digital way. Yeah. Um, if you have a physical space, um, you know, you can ask people to do, but it, kind of what you said a little while ago is it's, it's going to have to be good old fashioned um, mm -hmm. marketing that is going to entice people and also um, in addition to the, the sales, you would kind of mention like giving something of value, like from a, a content perspective, like what is it, why would they want to read, um, you know, through your, through your newsletter? What is it that you're, what is it that you're gifting them that, um, that day? So that's great. Yeah. Um, so we've also got um, good ways to get the customer email addresses when they purchase on another channel, for instance, Amazon. Um, any ideas on that, um, that there are certain restrictions? Yeah, I, I would not recommend um, using the email addresses that you get via Amazon uh, for promotional purposes. Mm -hmm. um, Amazon is really, like, really, really polices that. So you have the information at your disposal in case, like, you need to contact the customer um, in the event of an emergency or like if there's a problem with your order, like you're not supposed to use it for promotional purposes. And if you put them on your list and that person reports you, then Amazon will potentially shut down your seller account. I've seen it happen. Yeah, yeah. So do it. Yeah, definitely not uh, going out and forming. And then, you know, we all have that opt-in, opt-out kind of, mm -hmm. um, you know, thing. We know that that is, um, that's just kind of part of our culture, making sure you have some of those disclaimers and just definitely not, not uh, signing anybody up that, uh, that is, doesn't want to be there. Yeah. Um, yes. There's um, plenty of people that want to, that want to be there. You just got to find yeah. 
yeah. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, some of the other things are, is there any um, good words to use or not words to use, especially when it comes to, so um, our uh, daycare provider is talking about, you know, using affordable, like, are there anything that you like, don't like anybody's like, ooh, I don't, is there anything that turns anybody off or away I, from engaging in some of the things that yeah, you Yeah, I think that that's a really good question. Um, I think it would definitely depend on the company. I mean, every every company is different and has a different customer base. Um, so it really, again, kind of um, is a good idea to really think about like who your target customer is. Yes. Think about your customer base. I know that for Nicely Built, like we really try to stay away from um, using technical terminology. Like, So we'll like go out of our way to kind of like find a different way to say something, like if it just, you know, sounds really, really technical, mm -hmm. because that's one of our value props, like we're accessible. Yeah. Yeah. And to put my two cents on that, you know, with the mom having four kids in, in daycare along the way, you know, I think affordable is a great word because you can't say cheap when you're talking about no, your kids no. and you cannot say inexpensive. So affordable, I think, is, is a great word. And Amy, we've talked about this before when all of our services we have said for, for years are free. Well, they're complimentary. I mean, so I mean, even just a twist on that is is really mm -hmm. um, takes it to a, a different level. It's a different message. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think that this is a really great one, um, Chris, which is a, being a family business, uh, making handmade products and that the founder wouldn't be the one writing the emails. Um, but since you mentioned keeping things personal and, you know, including their name and that kind of thing, um, should they be addressing, should they be addressing it from who in the family is writing the emails, even though it's not the founder no. or craft a message that's more of like voice of the family or maybe even writing it for the founder yeah I think that it's fine to kind of send it on behalf of the, the company the family mm -hmm. one of my favorite newsletters is um, from a place based out of North Carolina called East Fort Pottery and they make beautiful pottery it's so pretty all and um they their emails they're they're always very interesting but they always sign them you know from the the East Fort Pottery team and there's like stories in there about the, the two founders from time to time. They also do spotlights of like people that work there as well as like to talk about their products and share recipes. Um, but it feels, it feels very personal, even though I know it's, it's not the owners writing it. I, I doubt it is. Got it. That's great. And what was it again? Cause I'd love to put that in our, um, in the chat, if you can read. Sure. It's East Fort Pottery. East Fort Pottery. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, they've got a great newsletter. That's awesome. Yes, we always need good examples of <laughs> of good uh, of good things. So we'll put that in the uh, in the chat so that so you can all go sign up for that and then um, and then get it sent. Um, and I know that you all have some um, some very specific um, things that uh, are to your business. And especially when it comes to um, target audience and some of the other things that um, Natasha talked about today. So I'm just gonna reiterate that um, ASBTDC does provide those services um, for you at no cost. Um, <laughs> And, um, and we'd love to help you in a one-on-one -on -one consulting kind of way. Um, we're very fortunate to have somebody like Natasha. And of course, you are um, welcome to contact Natasha directly. Chris has um, given that number out a couple of times. Well, not your personal mobile number. Uh, Natasha, yeah. but, and well, maybe, Natasha maybe I loves, did, Natasha. Yeah. Her, <laughs> website, her website. And Natasha Fine. also loves um, for you to follow her on Instagram. So um, so definitely find her there. But also reach out to us. Um, Chris will be putting um, our link to how to become a client. It's already in the chat. Um, so please do reach out to us because diving into things like um, market marketing strategies and things like that is definitely something that we do. So um, we'll just go ahead and uh, close everything out. We just want to thank you all again for being here. Um, we will email you a copy of this presentation. So make sure that you have sent us your full name if it doesn't appear in the participant window. And you'll also receive a brief survey that will help us continue serve to serve you and bring you quality programs. Chris, do you want to close us out? Tell us where else they can find us and sign up for our newsletter.
sorry. No, just kidding. Absolutely. <laughs> so you can also find a full listing of our workshops at sbtdc.uark.edu, or you can use that QR code that's right there on the screen to have access to more information. Um, we're going to repost all the links like we've been doing. Um, Amy was probably doing it right now before we even before I can even get back to that. But um, you can find um, all of our information, our past webinars, our future workshops, um, um, all of our tool kits that we have available. We've got a lot of information out there to help you guys. So make sure you, you um, have access and, and take advantage of those links that we've been posting. But um, finally, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn um, for more information. And we are so happy to have you again, Natasha. You are a huge help. And like um, we've been posting your information in there. You are so gracious to give that. Um, well, thank you. Well, it, it has helped. And we've heard a lot of people that have have um, asked you a lot of questions. But um, anyway, you guys, thanks again for coming and we hope to see you next time. Thank you all so much. We'll see you soon.